who do you trust? Who do you trust? How do you know? How do you know who's who? How do you do that? How do you know who's who? Anybody ever have that question? Well, I'll say this. Just about all of you have been tricked. All of you have. Don't worry. There's no surprise here. All of you have been tricked. Somebody has come to you. Something has come to you. Appealing to you as though it needed aid. Instead, it got you. Right? Young person comes to your door and they're asking for help. How do you know if that person is, is, is essentially evil or not? How do you know? Very important question, isn't it? Because all of us have been taken for granted. All of us have been tricked. All of us have been beguiled. And we didn't know the difference, did we? So how do you know the difference? You ready? We do this by principle. This requires trust. Now, because all of us have been tricked to a degree, right? You thought a situation was one thing, it ended up being another. All of us have been tricked. It causes you not to trust the one above you or below you. It causes you not to truly trust those around you. And it can really strain your relationships and everything else and keep you up at night. It really can. So how do you know the difference if somebody is good or somebody is evil? The Lord said this. The Lord came to give sight to the blind. But he also said this. He will blind those who can see so that he can open their eyes that they may see. See how that works? The Lord is the missing element. See, in most cases, through our egos, pride, and other reasons, we like to determine what is good and what is not, and we like to prove that point. You can't operate like that anymore. See, you guys have been experiencers of parts of the spiritual realm. You know better by now. You know that you can be easily beguiled without the Lord. You should know by now that without the Lord you are doomed because what lies on the other side is too expansive for any one person to navigate. With the Lord, you will never be fooled and it requires trust. Trust in the Lord. Now listen, here's how the Lord works. You don't know who the tares are right now, not all of them, because you don't need to know who the tares are right now. During a time when you need to know what is what, the Lord will open your eyes in that moment. There's no need for the Lord to open your eyes right now that you can point out the evil all in the world. Why? Why? The same reason he told the angel, do not... Do not take up the tares right now. Let them grow together. And when they're full grown, remove the tares. It's for the same reason he said you, if you do it when they're young, you can uproot the wheat. Now, why is that so important? Here it is. Suppose you could see who is evil and who is good. The question will be, could the Lord trust you to operate in his will? Or would you operate in yours? Many people would go out there like Rambo. Well, that person's evil. we got to remove that person. But listen, you'd be the only person that could see it. Nobody else could. No matter what you did, you couldn't prove that that person was evil because the deeds you're looking for would not have been committed by that person. Nobody around you would see that person as evil. And when you remove them and chastise them, they would point to you and say, you're evil. That's what would happen. That's why you cannot remove the tears before the time. Because you would uproot the wheat. They would not understand the punishment upon the individual. Many of you have seen what you thought were good people that suffered some terrible things and died. And you would say, oh my, that's so horrible. That's because you cannot see beyond the flesh yet. Well, you actually can see. You've experienced beyond the flesh. But the Lord will allow you to see that in a time when it's needed. If you knew what was behind the flesh of all, you wouldn't have pity in your heart concerning many things in this world. You would not. Because you would see the force behind darkness. 
and your stomach, you, you wouldn't be hurt. Your heart would not be broken for what you see in the world. It wouldn't. You would say it's necessary. Right? But nobody else would see it. See, there's coming a time when all will see. And during that time, that's when the tears are removed. Did you notice that in the word of God? The eyes of all will be opened during those days, not before. If you remove something evil that nobody else can see, you're going to confuse everybody, especially if they think you're a representative of the kingdom. You're going to misrepresent everything. And in your good deed of saving people from that evil thing, you will have broken down half of the kingdom by yourself. Do you see how that works? That's why you have to trust the Most High. That in the time it is needed, he will not fail to show you who is who. Right? Do you guys see that? Look at Hitler when Hitler was a baby. He was a cute little baby. Suppose somebody came up from out of the blue and said, this is the most evil person on the face of the earth right now. I'm going to kill your baby. What do you think the mother would have thought during that time, or anybody else for that matter? They would have pointed to the individual and said, that person is the devil, remove him, and saved the baby, not knowing what the baby was. Now do you understand? The baby committed nothing, simply because you can see something. It does not validate that in the eyes of those around you. We serve a God of truth, a God of justice and uprightness. He has things known to all before he does something. That's why he reveals what he's going to do through his servants, the prophets, first. That's why it says, surely he will do nothing unless he reveal it to his servants, the prophets, first. He does that so that all of us know. He didn't go around sneakily doing things where one person knows and the other one does not. He didn't work that way. Man works that way, not a father. He presents a way to all so that all understand. And whoever takes his way, all can see who took it. That's how he works. Hmm? You must trust in the Lord's resolve. That means you never walk out there on your own and you don't have to. See, in prior times, we made lots of decisions based upon what we had an inkling toward. Suppose you had a gift and you could see the evil in somebody. You never once asked yourself, could everybody else see it? You've been tested in that area and all of us failed. I can assure you of that. All of us failed. Nobody else could see the evil but you. And when you spoke against it, you were deemed the evil one. And while you muttered to yourself, no one would hear a word you had to say. Because you acted prematurely outside of the timing of the Most High. Now you know. Now you have that learned lesson underneath your belt. You have to trust the timing of the Lord in all things. It is critical. Remember, he is the head. We are the body. Right? Trust his timing. No matter what you see, make sure the Lord's way is established in the earth. And to do that, you have to be patient and wait upon him. It's very easy, isn't it? Now do you understand what it is? To know the difference between evil, those things that are evil, and those things that are good. Sure, you can know all day. The question is, will you act outside of the Lord's decrees? Now, let me explain this to you because many of you, you do have gifts. But they feel like somebody put a wet rag over them right now, don't they? They're not as strong as what they used to be, are they? During the time of your testing, so that you would understand what you would do. They were sharp, weren't they? Almost like a bait, like, go ahead, go ahead, chastise that one, because that one is evil. It's almost like somebody was trying to bait you to do something before the time. All of us failed in that regard. You don't have to fail again. There are certain gifts that you have that are under safeguard. They're, they're for the kingdom. They're going to be utilized for the kingdom. It's not that they've been taken away, no. No. It's that you have matured. Matured enough to understand that those things that you do in life, they have a consequence. You can cause somebody else to stumble if you act prematurely. Right? It's time right now to consider your trust for the Most High. To trust His timing, His revealing. 
in those moments. Whatever gift he's giving you will be strong in those moments. It is timing, but understand the reason why. It's very easy to understand why. Everybody cannot discern what you can discern. They cannot see what you can see. And the Lord will reveal it to all that when something takes place, when the tares are gathered, no one's heart will be illegally broken. But if they're gathered up too soon, where the wheat cannot see that they are truly in darkness, the wheat will be hurt. Do you understand? And the Lord will not suffer his wheat to be broken like that. He's gathering his wheat into the barn. Right? Now, do you guys comprehend that one? Is that that's clear enough, right? That's part of your trust in the most high. I'll tell you something, too. When your trust is in the most high, you'll find that your life is very little limitations on it. There was a time in my life it seemed like everything was limited. If I go move left, a wall would come out of nowhere and smack me in the face and stop me. Whatever I wanted to do was supernaturally halted and destroyed. And I said, well, Lord, what is this? I can't move left. I can't move right. I can't move forward. I didn't understand at that time that I was in a type of cultivation and learning period. The Lord was showing me that if, if it were left to me, I would choose all the wrong things. That's what he was showing me. And so he allowed me to do things on my own, and the outcome was horrendous. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Huh? How about relationships? Oh, yeah, let me go get that one. That's who I want to spend my life with. The Lord didn't have anything to do with it. We saw, we selected, we grabbed, we changed. It fell apart, blew up in our faces. We cried. That's how it worked. That's what happens when we do things. Well, let me ask you this simple question. Who leaves the choice? Who would allow the Lord to prepare somebody for them? Because if you did that, you wouldn't go hunting on your own, right? But that takes what? Trust. And all of this conversation is a basis of trusting in the Lord. That's where it begins. That's where your freedom and your victory begins. In trusting in the Lord for real. Not just saying it, but understanding it. And, under, and to understand your trust of the Lord, your level of trust for the Lord, you first have to revisit how you did not trust him, how you did not wait for him, and what the results were in your life. If you can see that, an acknowledgement will come from you, and you'll say, yep, I did that. Nobody else did that but me. I was the one that acted prematurely. That's the beginning of your victory in truth, a victory that Satan can no longer tamper with. He can't play with, and nothing will be able to scoop that out of your life. But you will say, if I were left to my own devices, I would self-destruct. You know what a person of the world says? If everybody would have left me alone and I could have done it my way, I would have succeeded. All people of the world say the exact same thing. They always blame it on somebody else. You know what somebody of the kingdom will always say? It wasn't them. It was always me. A child of the kingdom assumes responsibility. A person of the world always has somebody to blame. Do you know that? We're, we're making a transition. Can you see the growth here? Sometimes you don't understand your own growth or how the Lord has grown you because it's often not communicated. You've been going through spiritual things and sometimes it's very difficult right to leave that alone for a minute to reflect on where you have come from and the process how far you are in that process all of its purposed and one of the highest purposes is to get us to see what we would do if we were left alone you know what it did it caused me never to utilize any if I were to have a gift, I would not utilize it for anything of me. It would be reserved for the kingdom only. And that would happen by decree of the Messiah only. I would never do it based upon what I think is right, based upon what I think I should do at a specific time. But I would wait upon the Lord. I've seen what happens when you help someone prematurely. You can corrupt them. If you bail a person out before they have truly changed or learned their lesson, you only murder them more. You add another stab wound to their stab wounds, don't you? That's what happens. Suppose a person robs a bank. 
and they start crying when they get home. You say, oh, they didn't mean it. And you're a lawyer. You go get them off the hook. Two days later, they go back and rob a bank and kill five people. How would you feel? The problem was you were convinced they were ready. But no one, your Messiah did not disclose to you that they were ready. That's what you deduced. That's what we must not do. Why is that? Because every element you've been against in this world and every element that's been against you also resides within your flesh. You are not your flesh. Your flesh is simply a vessel, but it comes from the earth and it shares some of the same corruption the earth has in it from people. The earth itself is not corrupted. The people, when they rot and go into the earth, the soil is different. Does that make sense to you guys? Right? And in our flesh, our desires that are unholy. You know that. All of us know that because we transition from 11 years old to 19 years old. We understand there are things in us that cause us to be braving lunatics and animals. We understand that with great maturity, don't we? So in your flesh is an animal absent you. But you're the one that's in this vessel to say, no, 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 no. We're not doing that. And we're not doing this. You obey me as I obey the Lord. That's how we're going to work here. Now, let me give you this, folks. The more you yield to those ways of holiness, the more authority you're going to find yourself exercising over all spiritual things in your life. Do you know that? Because all of you reached a point, you have already experienced what it is to have no spiritual authority over your assailants in dreams and in a spiritual sense. You know what it is to be defenseless, don't you? And you don't like that feeling very well. You know what it is to be at the mercy of some other spiritual entity, whether it be by dream or in real life, you know what it is. And you don't like that. That's quite frightening, isn't it? It's very frightening. Well, let me share this with you. So long as you operate your life your way, you will not have that spiritual authority over those elements in your life. You will strengthen them. As soon as you surrender your life to the will of God and you sincerely seek the righteousness of Christ, you're going to find yourself having spiritual authority over anything that would step foot in your life. See, those are the moments when a dream will start to begin and you'll say, no, and it's gone. You'll say nothing more, but no. Why? Because your heart's in the right place. Your mind is in the right place. You have surrendered unto the Lord, and the Lord is with you. See, when the Lord said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. So how can the devil step in and do anything to you if Jesus is right there with you? How can he do that? He cannot, can he? What you've gone through has been supervised. I know for many of you it's been a nightmare, but it's still been supervised. Through a surrender. To truly take your position up with the kingdom is key in your life. And because you're like Lot's wife, you can never turn back. and say, well, just let me look one more time. You can never do that. Don't ever do that. Never get drawn back into those things you have left, but look forward understanding that the Lord demonstrated with careful supervision how deep you could be sucked into darkness, and you already know that, but he will never allow that to take place. He's showing you something here that without him you are already doomed. He's conveying to you a truth that it takes a person a lifetime to actually capture and live by. He's showing you spiritually. He started in your early days. It's embedded within you. You don't deny the spiritual realm. Those of you who have had these multiple experiences, you know the spiritual realm is real. You have a cautionary tale for those who don't believe. You have a sorrow for those who are unaware. But you yourselves, you know it's real. Now it's time to acknowledge that we had a submission problem. That we did try to do things on our own. And to acknowledge that our resolve is no good. 
But the Lord's direction is deliverance. See, now it's time for you to experience what happens with a full submission of you unto the Lord. And by his authority, the change of all those spiritual interactions that have been in your life. I'm old and crusty, right? So when people divide the spiritual from the natural, I don't do that too well. It's, it's, to me, it's all mushed together. It's like one and the same to me. In that regard, though, I truly understand the resolve of the Lord, and I understand the fight to trust him. You can trust him and still act on your own out of ignorance, and you have to be careful of this. Because those of you who have visitation, your minds are all over the place. That's almost like a continuous trait of those who have been visited. Extremely intelligent. Many of you are able to talk your way out of any situation. But you must never practice those ways. That's exactly what Satan wants you to do. To feel so desperate that you would utilize every gift within you to save yourselves. No. It's not the way of the upright. So don't take that way anymore. It's like if you go through a problem, how many of you have looked back and said, well, you know, last time I had this problem, I did this little bad thing and it all went away. I'm going to do it just one more time. No, don't do it the one more time. Because all of you spiritually have a warning within you. Don't you? You have a warning. And the warning is this. You know Better time is here. But if you go back into certain things, you'll never emerge from it again. Let me hit that home to you a little deeper because a demonstration was given to you that scared the peanuts out of your M&Ms. You ready? How many of you were sleeping, but you started falling into a deep, deep, deep sleep to the point where it scared you? And you said, oh my goodness, if I go any deeper, I'm not coming back. How many of you? experience that you said if i go any deeper i'm not coming back and so you you fought to wake yourselves up because it was a warning within you saying you go any deeper you will not come back and see it made it possible for you to believe that you can go so deep that you'll never come back that was a communication with a little demonstration so now you know the truth of that statement. The Lord finished that warning to let you know something. That there are things in your life that if you go back to, you will not emerge. You will not. You'll be like Lot's wife. You'll be just like that lost, just like that. You're the ones that can never afford to look back. You must always look forward and fight to look forward. You must fight to look forward. And you understand by the demonstration of you going into that deep sleep, you have to fight to look forward. It doesn't automatically happen. It is not just turning your head forward and that's it. You have to exert yourself to look forward. Because the forces that will cause you to look back will be forces of strength. But the Lord will strengthen you enough to always resist them. Please understand that. See, you guys who have had these experiences, you even though the nature of that word fight, it means something different to you than it does other people. Because it's not by physical strength, is it? You understand that it's by spiritual willpower. It's not your physical strength. It's by spiritual willpower. And it's almost like you've been trained in that area to have spiritual willpower. Time for you to utilize that. In the same way you fought not to go deeper, you have to fight to face Christ at all times. Never turning left or right. Listen, it's going to take you utilizing that same willpower, spiritual willpower, to face Christ. Because there are forces out there that will always attempt to make you look left or right, so that you can look back. Please realize that. Oh, there's so much to discuss. 
And although you guys would just love to continue this conversation, I know we've covered quite a bit, right? But you have the gist of this first part now, hopefully. Listen, be encouraged. It is not, the whole situation is not what you want. Can you all see right now? Now, in the beginning of this conversation, you thought it was going to be one thing, right? Do you realize now it's highly spiritual? I mean, it's spiritually charged. Can you see that now? Because at first, you really thought I was going to steer in a specific direction. Hopefully, right now, you can see this thing is based in a spiritual scene, a, a spiritual framework. But only those who have experienced this framework can navigate. Not everybody is meant for that. Not everybody would survive that. So don't sit there and condemn yourselves another day, but realize the Lord has been raising you this entire time to overcome some things that the average person cannot. And as part of your calling, you're not some throwaway. You're not a lunatic, nor are you crazy. You're being shown things on a spiritual level that a lot of people know nothing about. But they're soon to learn. And the hope is your faith will be in position to be of assistance to those who will also face these things. 